السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد قال الله عز وجل في كتاب العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا آثارهم وكل شيء نحصناه في إمام مبين وقال عز وجل في مقام آخر إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي وماتي لله رب العالمين First of all, uh, I think it's a bad idea to make me speak at this time because we may go to Isha. And instead of getting reward, we'll get sins for delaying Maghrib Salah. And Hassan Suleiman said the same thing, but I will try to conclude by 9.50. Brothers and sisters, we've heard so many speeches throughout the last 24 hours. One of the things that are difficult for going at the end is that people already take all your topics. And you know, my brothers, they always put me towards the end because they know that I do everything off the cuff so I can change everything as things go on. So I was listening to the YouTube sessions yesterday. I was like, oh, I was going to talk about that. Then I was going to talk about this. Then Mufti Bahab spoke about what I was going to talk about. And then I came today. It was the YouTube uh, link was not live to throughout the day today. So I sat next to somebody over there and he had the notes from all the lectures. And I'm reading them, I said, oh, I was going to talk about that. So now I had to change everything up and, and start talking about something completely uh, different. But whatever Allah puts in my heart, I will share with all of you. Brothers and sisters, on October 7th, when I first walked in to the room where my brother's body was resting in Iona, across, um, you know, it was the first time seeing him um, since October 5th, two days went by. And... Uh, I remembered our teachers and reading in books that imagine yourself laying down in a casket and people around you. What would you want them to be saying about you? How would you want to be remembered? And then work towards that. Work towards that. Because it is true, the angels are giving these souls the message of what's being said. So when I stood there, and then I sat down and started reciting Surah Yasin, Surah Rahman, and I sat there for an hour, hour and a half before we took his body to Ama'ai and we did Janazah, these thoughts were crossing my mind that imagine if it was me over there, and we all will be there one day. Not that it was, not, that, not just the fact that it's difficult emotionally, but you have to take this, take it in, and then try to draw lessons from it. My brother, Imam Abdul Aziz, uh, a few weeks later, told me, Abdul uh, Rahman, you know, you love uh, talking about legacy, so now you have more to talk about. You like talking about this topic, so now you have more things to say and share. And I said, you know what, I'm, I'm never going to talk about this topic again, because it will be too difficult for me to talk about it. And then they gave it to me this time again. I will share three things with all of you. If we have these three things that we find in the life of Ibrahim, السلام, we will leave this world in a manner in which people after us will remember us in a good way. Now, to be remembered by everyone is not the condition. To be remembered by Allah is the condition. That's what we want. Not everyone's going to be as popular as Imam Bukhari. Not everyone, this is not what we're trying to reach. We're trying to just be uplifted in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. So don't sit here thinking, oh, I have to do such a big thing and grand thing. No, you and your family, your children, yourself, you can make an impact and leave a legacy among them. My brother, Sheikh Abdul Rahim, he never heard me saying Sheikh to him in his life. Because he just graduated, came back, but I said it once, he heard me say it in a khutbah. But for the rest of my life, I'll be saying Sheikh Abdul Rahim, with a Sheikh before his name and Rahimahullah after his name. These are three things that were coming to my mind as I was sitting there. If we develop these three things that Ibrahim al-Islam had, then we can live a meaningful life. Whether you like it or not, you're going to leave a legacy. The only question is, are you going to be intentional about it? You, we're all leaving traces behind. The one who's walking on the beach looks back, there's footprints. Now, you, it's, whether you're going to be intentional about it or not, whether you're going to plan for it or not, whether you're going to leave traces of good deeds or bad deeds, that's what we have to decide today. We will, live, we, we will definitely leave a legacy. 
Allah says, we will write down what they have sent forth and we will also write down what they left behind for everybody. If you're talented, we have a gift and every single one of us have a gift that Allah has given us. Don't let, don't be sad or confused. Don't look at your weaknesses in the mirror of other people's strengths. This person's a better speaker, so I mean, I can't do anything in life. Don't do that. Rather, you have something that I don't have. And he has something that you don't have. And she has something that I don't have. This is how Allah SWT has gifted all of us. And all of us can have an impact. But these are the three things that came to my mind that Ibrahim al Islam had because of which he has become such a personality that is the most universally accepted personality on the face of the earth across all faiths. The first thing was he was very curious. What was he? Curious. Einstein once said, I don't have any supernatural powers. I'm just passionately curious. I'm not supernatural. I'm not a genius. But I'm passionately curious. If we're all passionately curious, sitting here thinking today, what is the purpose of my life? How can I have an impact? What can I do? And we're passionately curious. Not just thinking about things and move on and talk about things. No. When Ibrahim Islam was first, first told by his mother to sell these idols in the, in the marketplace, it comes in tafsir. He was selling these idols with this statement. Who will buy these idols from me? Such idols that do not harm nor benefit. Because he's seen them, they don't benefit nor harm. So now he's curious. He starts looking at the stars. Is this my Rabb? He starts looking at the moon. Is this my Rabb? He looks at the sun. Is this my Rabb? And his curiosity pushes him to a point where he says, Inni wajjahtu wajhiya lilladhi fatara samawati wal ard hanifa wa ma'ana mil mushrikeen. After looking at everything, that passionate curiosity, walakad atayna Ibrahim rushtahu min qabl. Allah said, We had granted Ibrahim guidance and intellect. Muhabbat khud hi sikhadati hi adabi muhabbat. A poet says, When you're passionate about something and you want to get to the bottom of it, it will teach you the nuances of it. Allah will give you the wisdom. Allah will tell you what to do with your life. If you really are passionate about doing something, what can I do to serve Allah? Okay, if you, are you really passionate about that? Allah will then teach you what you can do and help you throughout your life. So after all that, he says, Inni wajjahtu wajhi I know for a fact, nothing in this world can benefit me nor harm me except for Allah. And I have turned my entire existence to Allah. You seen a merry-go-round? You're going around and around? Well, that center most point of our life, if we want to leave a legacy behind us, cannot be wealth, cannot be materialism, cannot be resources, has to be Allah. Has to be Allah. And the one who does that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uplifts him or her in this world and in the hereafter. That's the first thing. One Khaja Majzub rahmatullah he said this poem, and I've been, for the last two weeks, they've been echoing in my mind. Mawlana Ashraf Ali Thani said about this poem, he said, this poem is worth more than the entire world, whatever it contains. He says, Har tamanna dil se rukhsat ho gayi. Ab tu aja, ab tu khalwat ho gayi. Ek tum se kya muhabbat ho gayi. Sari dunya se adawat ho gayi. عشق میں ذلت بھی عزت ہو گئی لو اب فقیری میں بھی بادشاہت ہو گئی ہر تمنا الحمدللہ I did not sing it otherwise all you will leave now no I can't sing that one ہر تمنا دل سے رخصت ہو گئی the only way this curiosity pushed him to this point where he said that's it Oh Allah, Khaja Sahib is saying, Har tamanna dil se rukhsat ho gayi. Oh Allah, I have no interest life in this, no interest left in my heart. Nothing, it's done. 
خالی اب تو آ جا ناؤ کم ان سائڈ بیکاز آئی نو یو ناٹ کین کم ان ٹو مائی ہارٹ ایف اٹ ہیز ادر تھنگس آئی نو دیٹ آئی بین ٹول دیٹ جسٹ لائک فیسنگ دا قبلہ وتھ یور باڈی از امپورٹنٹ ان صلاح فیسنگ دا قبلہ وتھ یور ہارٹ از آلسو امپورٹنٹ ان صلاح رائٹ اٹس ناٹ جسٹ یور باڈی ہی سے اب تو آ جا ہی سیز ناؤ یو کم دین ہی یوز دا ورڈ اب تو خلوت ہوگی ناؤ ایم آئسولیٹڈ ناؤ اے پرسن تھنکس لیٹ می ڈو عزلہ اینڈ خلوہ سر ان اے کارنر ڈو ذکر That's true. That's one type of khalwat. But the true khalwa, the true isolation is when your heart is completely empty of everything else. Ek tum se kya muhabbat ho gayi? Oh Allah, I love you now. I love you. That's it. Sari dunya se adawat ho gayi. Nothing in this world appeals to me anymore. Then he says that now ishq mein zillat bhi عزت ہو گئی اس ان ان یور لو ایون اف سم ون کرٹیسائز کرٹیسائز می اٹ اسٹل ڈگنیٹی اٹ اسٹل ریسپیکٹ بیکاز دے آر کالنگ می دے آر کرٹیسائزنگ می بیکاز آف مائی لو فار یو ان مائی اوبیڈینس ٹوڈز یو ہی سیز ان یور لو ایون بینگ پور از بینگ اے کنگ بیکاز آئی ہیو یور ٹریجر وتھ می جنید جمشید رحمۃ اللہ علیہ ہز فرسٹ پوم ہی ریسائڈ آفٹر coming towards what a legacy he left behind, right? The first poem that he recited after uh, coming on the right track, he says, Jaan de di humne unke naam par Ishq ne socha na tha kuch anjaam par He says, the first thing afterwards is that I have decided to give my entire existence to Allah Before making that decision, when my love for Allah made me do this, my love did not think about what will be the final outcome. Ibrahim Islam did not think when he finally decided to break those idols and go against his whole community that he will be thrown into that fire. But after every fall there's a rise, he was thrown into that fire, then he became Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam and Khalilullah. Yusuf Alayhi Salaam was thrown into that well and he became Yusuf Alayhi Salaam afterwards. So he wasn't thinking that he's going to get burnt, but it was, he was going to be thrown into the fire. But Allah subhanahu wa saved him. He was ready for any outcomes. Whatever he had to face, the love for Allah was going to be enough for that. So the first thing that if we want to leave a legacy is our curiosity should push us to make a decision. I can't tell every single one of you sitting here right now, what can I do to leave a legacy? But that should push us and our merry-go-round in the middle has to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love for Allah. And I'll move on to the second thing. The second thing is where everyone has a problem with nowadays. Majority of us have a problem with the second thing. And without this, without this, it is impossible to live a life today that will have an impact tomorrow. You have to go through the second process. And to explain what the second thing is, I'll just tell you a small incident that took place in England. Sometimes you get wisdom from the most unexpected places. I have a very infamous brother-in-law who I love very much, but I mean, he, he is one of the most unexpected places you can get wisdom from. And after getting wisdom from him, I have concluded that you can get wisdom from anywhere. Because this person never says anything good. He's always arguing with me. He's my test on this earth. My wife's brother. I'm not even sure if he's here. And I have no problem talking about it. You know why? Because we're going to argue about it afterwards. <laughs> If I have to drive a far drive from here to Kentucky, I'll take him with me. And he will start talking about some sports. I know this person is a blind muqallid of Stephen A. Smith. Blind follower. Whatever he says, he says. So what I do ahead of time is I watch all of his shows for the last week. So I already know what he's going to come with. I sit in the car. He says, yo, LeBron has better stats than Michael Jordan. I said, how are you comparing a tabi'i to a sahabi? <laughs> that doesn't matter how many amal tabi'i you have. Khalas, they never come close to a sahabi. Astaghfirullah, I don't mean that. But this person, after my brother passed away, Rahmatullah we were driving and he came and he was taking care of us. And one day, you know, he has weird ways of talking, very strange ways. I told him the best, he's, the, he's only made two good decisions in his life. 
Imagine, you know, we make hundreds of decisions all the time, but he's only made two good decisions in his life. His wife and the car he bought. <laughs> and for a, for a guy, that's good enough, right? <laughs> You're good, if you have a wife, mashallah, and he bought an F80 M3. Khalas, that's it. These are two good decisions. So we were sitting in his car and we were driving, and he said to me, when I was crying, he said to me, uh, Dharaman. I'm like, yeah. He said, Allah has given you more than he has taken from you. Really? Allah has given all of us more than what he has taken from us. SubhanAllah, that's it. It, made, it uplifted me at, the, at that time. That's true. He's like, look, you have three other brothers. Your mother and your father are still alive. You have miftah, you have all this stuff. Allah has given you more. Allah will always give you more than what he takes. For sure. So this un, another unexpected place of wisdom was this Punjabi in England. He was coming, I heard this from a person who was in that masjid. He was coming every single day for Salah, for Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Even if it was cold, it was flooding, it doesn't matter what happened, he was coming. So one day, it was freezing cold, he was walking to the masjid. So the person asked him, he said, Man, how do you do this? How do you come even though the circumstances are so difficult? And he said something in Punjabi. He said, Tawada kuch lagai ni, sada kuch bachai ni. Those who know Punjabi understand what it means. Tawada kuch lagai ni, or sada kuch bachai ni. He said, you have not given anything, and I have not left anything at home. I have given up everything I have, and you have given nothing towards this, because this person was a convert. Sikh convert. His family, his kids, his everything, he le had to leave everything. And he says, because I had to leave everything, that's why I have value and respect for this. And you haven't given anything. Sarda kuch bachyayini. Or tarda kuch lagyayini. Brothers there was a, and sisters, there was a great scholar, I had three things. A great scholar by the name of Qadi Abu Bakr, rahmatullah and I didn't tell you what the second thing is, but you can understand what the second thing is now. He, was, he says himself, he says, once I was in Mecca, and I was very hungry. I was staying in Mecca after Hajj. I had no food, no nothing. So one day, in extreme hunger, I walk outside, and I see a luqta, like something on the floor. It was a silk, it was a pouch of, made out of silk. So I picked it up. I brought it back home. I opened it up. It was a necklace of pearls and rubies. So I left it there, and then I went back outside. When I went back outside, I saw somebody saying, has anyone seen this pouch? Whoever finds this pouch, I'll give him 500 dinar. So I look at him, and to test him if he knows, you know, because in madrasa, or in a boarding school, whenever we say we found a $20 bill, Everyone says it was mine. Okay? Then you have to ask, okay, you know, where was the pyramid? Or what was on your bill? And then someone's going to say some oil stains were on it. Okay, here's yours. <laughs> Something, you have to identify it. So he said, he said, okay, if it's yours, come inside the house. So Sheikh Abdullah always gives me a disclaimer before I give a talk. He tells me in my ear. This time he didn't tell me. He always tells me, Mufti. Don't try to crack jokes. And this time he didn't tell me, so I started. So forgive me, Bajan, if I'm not funny. He always tells me that. And if he watches my video afterwards, he'll call me. Hey, 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 corny jokes. <laughs> so he, he comes inside, he comes inside the house. He says, okay, what kind of bag was it? He identifies the color. He says, what was in the bag? He identifies the necklace. He says, how many pearls were on the, on the thread? He identifies the amount of pearls. What kind of thread was it? He identifies the thread. All the ahkam of lukhta, you know, if you, uh, something lost, he goes through all the different rulings of it. And finally, he concludes that this bag does belong to him. So he hands it over to him. And that person hands over 500 dinar. He says, nope, I can't take it. This wasn't mine. He said, no, you have to. He says, no, this was mine. This was yours. It was yours in the first place. I found it. It's yours. I can't take it. He said, he tried so much, but I refused. He left, and then afterwards, I had to leave Mecca. I was hungry. 
had nothing to do in Mecca. So then I jumped on a ship to go somewhere else. While I was on my, while I was traveling, we had a wreckage. Everyone died on the ship except for me as I was floating on a plank of wood and I arrived at an island. As you're looking at me, this is an authentic story. Just because I have a turban and a vest on doesn't mean I tell you weak hadith. <laughs> okay, that stereotype has to leave too. <laughs> All right, so it's an authentic story. So he comes to this island and the people over there um, he finds that they're illiterate people. They cannot read, they cannot write. And this guy's a Qadi in the Hanbali fiqh. So the people over there tell him, can you start teaching us how to read? So he starts teaching them how to read. And for his teaching, they were paying him, taking care of him. And then they realize he knows how to write. So they say, can you teach us how to write? So he starts teaching them how to write. After a little while, they start loving this person because he's the only literate person on the island. He's teaching them, he loves them. So then they offer uh, a yatima, an orphan girl from that island whose father had passed away to him in marriage. He said, marry her. He says, no, I'm not here for this. I did not come for this. I, you, know, you took care of me, I don't want to marry her. He said, please, they said, please you marry her. It'll be better for her, better for our generations. And enough, that, that will be another incentive for you to stay here. So you know this whole bid'ah of like the, the men moving towards the, the state of the girls? It started back in the day. <laughs> it's not other way around. It's been happening for a while. So he said, okay, no problem. He married her. They did the nikah. And the family was there. And as soon as he saw her, his eyes were fixated in one place. She had a necklace on. And he kept on looking at it like this. And the people around said, Oh, Sheikh, you broke her heart. You're not looking at her. What kind of person are you? You're looking at directly at her necklace. And he said, Let me tell you the story about this necklace. It was the same necklace he found in Mecca. Same necklace he found in Mecca. Never took a penny for. He told the whole story. As soon as he told that story, everyone screamed, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I said, what happened? He said, the people of the community said, when this girl's father came back, he used to make this dua after every salah. Oh Allah, unite me with the one who found this necklace and I would make him marry my daughter. Unite me with him, unite me with him. He passed away and Allah has united you with his daughter. After that, she, he had two children with her. She passed away. The necklace was inherited by those two children. The first child passed away, and the second child passed away. I always tell my mother, my father, and all of us, me, myself, burying your children is very difficult, but it's sometimes a condition to elevate your status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes Allah ha if Allah wants to elevate your status, and the only way that's possible is He continues to test you with different ways. No shoulder is strong enough to carry a, their own son's body to the grave, but this has been happening ever since the beginning of mankind. So he buried both of his children. Now the necklace comes to him, and he sells this necklace for 100,000 dinar. You know what he says after? He said, I left those 500 dinar for the sake of Allah. Allah gave me 100,000. مَنْ تَرَكَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ خَيْرًا مِنْ Someone who leaves something for the sake of Allah, Allah will give them far better. Ibrahim left his town, left his friends, left his community. Allah gave him Mecca. Allah gave him Hajra and Sarah. Allah gave him Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, and every prophet after him from his lineage. This is condition. In Surah Maryam, وَأَعْتَزِلُكُمْ comes first. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَتِنَا وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ مِنْ سَانِسْتِقْنَا عَلِيَّ comes second. First, he had to leave them. And then Allah made his legacy shine. Today, we want to follow deen without leaving anything. I'm still going to watch all my Netflix shows. Forgive me if I become a little bit aggressive. I'm still going to play all my video games. I'm still going to make sure I do all these things. And at the same time, I'll do this. This is, not a, this is, this is impossible. 
We have to leave things for the sake of Allah. Businessmen will have to leave money on the table for the sake of Allah. They will have to leave it. We will have to leave halal interests. There's nothing wrong with it. Halal. This is giant. You can do it. But you will have to leave it because there is a greater purpose in life. And to achieve that greater purpose, you will have to leave this inferior thing, which is permissible. You maybe have to, you go on vacation six times a year, you might have to go four times so you can pay for a family in Philistine or in Syria for the upbringing. But your two vacations have to go. Anything happening all over the world, if it's my yearly vacation, I will never compromise that. I still got to go on my yearly vacation. That's not how it works. Today we cannot leave our beds for salah. Today we cannot leave our joysticks for our parents. We will have to leave things in order for us to leave a legacy. And I conclude because I only have two minutes left. The third thing I will say, which Ibrahim al had in him, is this beautiful, beautiful methodology of life. I could talk about this for three hours. Inna allaha katab al ala kulli shay. Allah has written beautification, perfection on everything in this world. Allah loves this. Allah has written for this. Leave this world in a state, in a better state than you found it. Leave your community, leave your spouse, leave your children, everything around you, leave it in a better way. We always leave a room in dirtier than we found it. Right? We leave the masjid dirtier than we found it. Leave it better. When Ibrahim al-Islam came to Mecca, there was nothing there. There was a desert there. But he left it with the Kaaba. He left it with Zamzam. He made dua. وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ Everyone who comes here, keep feeding them. Brothers and sisters, today the disease that's plaguing us is self-service. Self-interest. We just care about ourselves. If I'm okay, everything is okay. This is not the purpose of our life. I'm here to serve my Allah. And I will serve people because it will be... It will be a means of my purpose of my life, which is serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not here to take. We are here to give. We are not here to protect our back from marks. Ali bin Hussein radiallahu anhu, when he passed away, when they were doing ghusl of his body, they saw bruises and black marks on his back. And then they didn't know why these marks were on his back. And the next morning they found out that so many families in Medina were being fed at night. Can يعيشون they used to survive off of these provisions. They had no idea. They had no idea where this was coming from. But there was this person from the ahl bayt from great lineage, carrying sacks on his back and dropping it off in front of people's homes. Not keeping it, but giving it without them even knowing about it because he was a person of Ihsan. Alamma Raghba Sfahan says, Ihsan means you give more than what you should be giving. And you take less than what you deserve. If we become people like that, then no one will have any problems. Nobody. Because we will always fight to give more. When you go to a restaurant with a generous person, giving your credit card to pay for the bill is like a drug deal. We do everything. Because you're two people that are competing to be generous. I was in Pakistan, I'll conclude by this. I was in Pakistan, I went to a restaurant, and I'm always the person who wants to pay for the meal. And I'm sitting there and I was sure I was going to pay for this meal. The person, the person who was next to me, I know he's generous too. And he's a muhsin. He's always competing. So I told him, get me some, co- give me some Pepsi. And he said, take a sheikh. He got up and took me a Pepsi. In the meantime, I got the bill. The guy who came, he said, oh, it's already paid for. I said, that's impossible. It's already paid for. He's already paid for. Subhanallah, this person came to this restaurant the night before and gave his card already. Knowing that we're going to come there tomorrow, he knows me. I said, subhanallah. Now imagine two people who are generous competing with each other. Allah is jawad. He says, you can't out-generous me. You can't out-generous me. You will never be able to out-generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will always give you more than what you give. So keep giving. Don't be a receiver, be a giver. Don't keep for yourself. And a person... We look back, there was three dynasties at the time where Salahuddin Ayyubi, he liberated Palestine. How many dynasties? Three. 
If I ask everyone in this room, name me one of those kings, we won't know them. Because those were people who kept, built palaces. And Salahuddin Ayyub came and gave everything he had. So we say his name. Imam Bukhari at his time, there were emperors, there were kings. We don't know who they are. We don't know who they are. They came, they took this, they, they built, they grew. Nobody knows who they are. If I ask everyone sitting in here in this room, they won't know who they were. But not a single speech is given anywhere in the world without his name being mentioned. Because he came and gave. Give the world something. Don't take your talent to your grave. They won't do you any benefit. Give your gifts that Allah has given you and the talents that Allah has given you. Give it to others. Spend on others. Waqfil janahaka al mu'mineen. Just keep spreading yourself out for others. It doesn't matter how much they hurt you, bother you. It doesn't matter how much it takes. If you do this, if you do this, and you follow these three conditions, this is a recipe for living a good life and leaving a legacy that Allah has put in my heart. Allah make us among those who truly act upon whatever was said. My father, he says, Sabne mujhe chora kahi, chora na dena tum. This is his poem. He says, I can, everyone can leave me, oh Allah. But you don't leave me. Because if you don't leave me, then even if nobody knows me right now, people will remember me after I leave this world.